Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Beach Pneumatic Transit. Alfred Eli Beach was an inventor and co-owner of the magazine Scientific American. And he was a very curious and intelligent man. For example, in 1856, he invented a typewriter that actually created raised text that would help the blind be able to read. It was never produced commercially, but he secured a patent and it won him praise from his peers. So this was someone who had a lot of ideas and who wanted to make the world a better place. Beach lived in New York City and day in and day out, he saw a growing problem, traffic congestion in Manhattan. And he figured he could do something about it. So he looked to existing pneumatic technology. Pneumatic meaning using wind or air or operated by air pressure. Use of that technology dates back to ancient Greece, but in the 17th century and onwards, it was used in various experiments in various industries. You probably know it best as those bank tubes, like when you go through the bank drive through you put the stuff in, it goes whoo, that's pneumatic technology. Seeing this technology work in various ways inspired Beach on his quest to solve Manhattan traffic congestion. If pneumatic technology could be used in London, for example, to propel mail throughout the city underground, which was happening at that time, why not use it to propel people? So he got to work coming up with the design and he put a working version of it on display in 1867 at the American Institute Fair at the 14th Street Armory, which no longer exists, but this is what that spot looks like today. This is where Beach's proof of concept was first put on display in 1867. It was a suspended 100-foot wooden tube with a 10-passenger car on wheels that was driven back and forth by a 100-horsepower fan. It was the talk of the town, with some 75,000 people riding it during its exhibition at the fair. Encouraged by its popularity and having this incredible proof of concept, Beach got to work trying to secure the rights to build what he wanted to build underneath the streets of New York. However, there was a problem. Enter Boss Tweed. Notoriously corrupt criminal political boss of New York City, already skimming cuts off sales of existing above ground transportation in the city. Tweed did not want to grant Beach permission to build his subway system under the ground. Actually, Boss Tweed had his own ideas for an elevated train system in Manhattan, and so there would be a conflict of interest or a conflict of profits. So Beach had to change his approach a little bit. Beach proposed an underground pneumatic mail distribution system, a totally innocuous proposal, and he was granted permission. So it was under the guise of this mail distribution system that Beach and his workers actually began building what they wanted to build, which was a subway system for people. It was completed in 58 days. It was about 20 feet below street level. It was an eight foot wide, 300 foot long tunnel that ran from Warren Street, east onto Broadway and down to Murray Street. Again, this was another proof of concept, just a one block test. Beach did everything he could to make this an incredible experience for visitors. The waiting room or station was located in the second basement level of a store called Devlin's, which no longer exists, but there was a grand piano, a fountain, paintings, there was white brick everywhere. It opened to the public in February of 1870, and it was a huge success. Some 400,000 people wrote it during its first year at 25 cents a piece. Taking that huge success, Beach then submitted proposals to expand his coverage across Manhattan. But Boss Tweed, who was now enraged at having been deceived so, always refused, as did the other politicians who were in Tweed's pocket. It took a couple more years for Boss Tweed to finally lose his political foothold in New York. And it was after that that Beach finally received permission to build what he wanted to build, this incredible subway system under New York using pneumatic technology. But it was not to be. In 1873, a major stock market crash happened and funding was lost and Beach's hopes and dreams for this incredible subway system were dashed, this time forever. In 1899, contractors clearing out debris after a fire happened upon that tunnel and they took photos so we can see what that looked like. Our present day subway opened in 1904 and in 1912, when workers were constructing the BMT line, they happened upon the abandoned tunnel. 
and nobody knows what happened after that. It almost certainly got destroyed during continued construction, but that was the last time it was ever seen. And that is the story of Beach Pneumatic Transit, the subway system that could have been, and maybe should have been. I'm not saying that the technology is better per se, but can you imagine having fancy, beautiful, clean subway stations, white brick, rather than what we have now? If you want to read more about this story, I'm including a link to my website below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.